part of this role and part of this job and this family being under the pressure that it's under, inevitably, you know, stuff um, stuff happens. But look, we're we're brothers. We're, we'll always be brothers. Um, we're certainly on different paths at the moment. But I will always be there for him, and as I know, he'll always be there for me. But you know, it's just as I said, as brothers, you know, you have good days, you have bad days. That was Prince Harry talking last year about the relationship with his brother, Prince William. And, of course, since then, the big news has come through that Harry and Meghan will take a step back from being senior members of the royal family. But it got us to thinking, what happens when there's a breakdown in a family relationship or when your friend or family member starts dating someone that maybe you don't get along with? A hundred percent. Dr. Rachel Hannam is from North Brisbane Psychology. Good afternoon. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for having me. Look, this is very ho- ho- high profile, mm. what's going on here. And thank heavens when I've had, you know, family issues, the whole world hasn't been watching on exactly. and reporting on it, yeah. which would add a degree of difficulty I can't even begin to imagine. Yep. But how often do you have people who come to you and they're struggling with a family relationship of some kind? Very often. Mm. Yeah, it's a really common presentation in the therapy room. Are are these issues that have started a while back or can they be things that have just come up, as we mentioned, because there's somebody new in the mix as well? Yeah, so sometimes there's a particular catalyst or precipitating event, um, Mm. whether it's something's gone wrong at a a family event or a new relationship, as you've said. Um, But you know, I'm a therapist, so I dig. And so yeah. when, I, <laughs> when I dig a bit deeper and we explore yeah. the history, we can usually see what's under the surface and the patterns that um, that kind of led up to to the rift. Yeah. Um, what, what do you find is, uh, is, is there any relationship that's a bit more fraught than others? Is, is it like the, the siblings relationship or is it parent-child what, what do you find is the one that pops up the most? Well, in our practice, we do see a lot of couples. Uh-huh. And, you know, I think everybody knows that being married for a long time or cohabitating for a long time is a <laughs> is a tough gig. Yes, it and is. requires, there's no shame in needing in-depth training to develop the skills to do it. <laughs> um, but aside from the couples, I would say a lot of the conversations I have in my therapy office are about people's mothers. It's such a mm-hmm. stereotype. Yep. But... Um, it's it's a tricky relationship, fo- closely followed by relationships with people that with their fathers mm-hmm. and sometimes grandparents and siblings. What can happen when someone decides to break away from their family? Well, usually it's quite an agonising decision for mm-hmm. that individual, and I have sat with a lot of people going through that agony um, because a lot of really primal feelings come up, like abandonment. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm abandoning them or I'm being abandoned, rejection, isolation, a lot of fear and anxiety come up most of the time when people have decided to either completely estrange themselves or even just to take a break from mm. from their family. Although sometimes having some time out from each other is, is a really great thing to do. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking about sort of that, that Harry and Meghan aspect of it, given that their family you know, they they call themselves the firm. So they, it, it I is, didn't know they called themselves the firm. I think they do. I think they right. refer to themselves as the firm, yeah. Mm. So they know that their family is a business mm. as well in a way that very few other people would, would realise. Mm. Um, that step of breaking away, like when it first happened last week, I was a bit sort of, oh, well, good on you. Yeah. Go and get your own lives because you're not in line to the throne. You're not going to sit on a throne anytime soon. And... So, so was I. And I'll tell you a yeah. funny thing. Quite a few of the so, private psychologist Facebook groups that I'm a member of yeah. were celebrating their decision and saying this is what differentiation looks like, mm. which is a psychological. Yeah. yeah. So in family systems theory and other areas of psychology, differentiation, and there's inner and outer. So inner differentiation is about being able to Simply put, tell the difference between your thoughts and your feelings or your beliefs mm. and your feelings. Out of differentiation is being able to see the difference between your own thoughts and beliefs and feelings and those of your family members and then becoming okay with being different. Mm-hmm. The key is in differentiation is yep. I'm allowed to be different yep. to my grandmother, parents, brother, sister-in-law. You know, mm. I'm allowed to have my own thoughts and feelings and beliefs and values and make my own Choices. Choices and forge a different path. But it, and even though that's high profile, it's just as as difficult mm-hmm. and emotional and challenging 
for anybody going through it, isn't it? Absolutely. That, who am I outside of my family? Yeah. Or even inside if I want to be outside. Yeah, and it and it's tricky for that family, I imagine for Harry, um, but this is the case for so many other humans. You know, they had such shared bonding when mm. um, their mother died. When Diana died, yeah. You know, and in families there's so much bonding that happens around um, crisis, People bond through crisis, as we're mm. seeing. People bond through celebrations. You know, they get together and watch the football. But we also, you know, can bond in other ways that are less functional. You know, we um, we want to feel connected and bonded. So we take on the beliefs and the patterns and the values and attitudes of our family. And at some point we realise that's not me or that's not working for me or it's not what I want. And mm. so... Yeah, you're right. Anybody who's gone through that will know. And it doesn't matter if you're high profile or yep. Joe Blow. It's hard. It's difficult. And then somebody else comes on the scene. And, you know, being a terrible amateur psychologist here, that's me, not you, of course. Um, you, you're an expert in the field. I'm just dabbling. I think you're pretty good, Kelly. Oh, ta <laughs> um, I'm, I'm looking at Megan and thinking he chose her for a reason. There's a reason that he chose a woman who was independent, that had her own career, that was older. That it's interesting, you know, isn't it? Yeah, mm. he he didn't he didn't choose someone who was English, who knew the drill, uh, naive who knew what nineteen year old yeah, like well, his mother was. That's yeah. it, because that really worked out very badly for <laughs> nearly everybody concerned. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that this this was a deliberate decision to marry somebody who maybe would give him that access to an out, so to speak, or at least a lessening mm. of what was expected of him from the royal family. I, I think so. My understanding is that he has struggled with mental health issues. And since, he's admitted that. And yeah. he's admitted that very openly and supported mental health organisations publicly since he was 13, not long after his mother died. And I, I'm assuming that if that's the case, he's gone through some therapy, he's mm. done a lot of self-growth, um, personal growth, and... Uh, you know, come to realise um, some things that perhaps his predecessors in the royal family were not mm. aware of about himself as a person and that, yeah, he po possibly has made a very deliberate decision there. So what do we do when a family member starts dating someone uh, that, uh, that we don't particularly like? We think, oh, they're not good for him or her, uh, that, mm. that they... they we we feel that they're making them someone we don't like or we don't agree with mm. how they've changed them. Mm. And that's quite a common experience, yeah. isn't it? Um, well, I think it's good to ask yourself, first of all, is this good for the person? Perhaps mm. it is good for them. It's part of their growth and part of their journey. Um, so I I would definitely suggest people ask themselves that question. If they're still really concerned, because you know, I see families where – you know, the 18-year-old the daughter is dating a guy who takes drugs, deals drugs. You know, there's mm. some very genuine concerns, yep, concerns. there. Yep. Um, so a bit of a different situation. Um, I often advise those people not to, not to give ultimatums, avoid ultimatums. They mm. never work yep. in families. But state your concerns very thoughtfully, very calmly at the right time, but just once. Yep. Don't keep going on and on and on. That must be so hard to watch, though. So watch hard. someone you know who is making, you know, it's going to end badly, but you can't. Is, is it that thing of you can't tell them? You just got to love them and leave the door open? Yeah, I think you can tell them. I think you can mm. share your anxiety, your concern out of love. You can tell them what your fears are, what you want mm. for them. You know, come from your heart, come from that good place. Um, and if they've heard you the first time, there's no point in saying it a hundred times. Yeah. Um, they'll know. You know, and trust that you haven't raised an idiot, that, you know, they'll, it's part of their journey that they will yeah. figure it out. I mean, you're walking a fine line. You do what you can. You say anything you need. If you can help pay for them to get some therapy or professional help, mm. then offer that. Say, you know, what do you need? How can I help? But, um, you know, trust, trust in life and trust in the process. Yeah. We're talking about family fallouts this afternoon on ABC Radio Brisbane and Queensland. You're with Kelly Higgins-Devine and my guest is Dr Rachel Hannam from North Brisbane Psychology. What if, what if that, you just don't like that person? Like there's actually nothing wrong with them really. They're not, they're not evil. It's just that you don't get along and you think that, well, you know, you're taking my, my sibling away from me or Find my... Find something. Find something to admire about them. If you look really hard, most people have yeah. <laughs> some endearing yeah. or admirable quality. Mm -hmm. And try and focus on that. Yeah. It's hard. It is hard. It's 
hard to love someone that someone you love loves and you don't like them, isn't it? Like it's really difficult. It's really hard and I see that quite often. Some of the older clients that I get who are in their 50s and 60s have come to me about that issue. You know, I really mm. don't like my daughter-in-law or my son-in-law. If there's children involved, mm. I say just focus on the children as much as you can. Yeah. Smile and nod. <laughs> but the, yeah. how's this going to go? Like I, I look at um, at that royal relationship and this seems like the first time that – that one of those sort of this, these spares, you know how you've got the heir and the spare. Yeah. Well, he, he's no even not even a spare any longer. There are three spares above him. Mm. Uh, you've got Charles. Actually, there's four. You've got Charles, then you've mm-hmm. got William, mm-hmm. then you've got his three kids. Yeah. So is this a – is it difficult to forge a new path because, you know, Margaret – well, as we've all seen in The Crown, you know, languished with drugs and despair mm. – uh, Edward was just sent off to France once he said, no, I don't want to be king, uh, that this is someone saying, I want to be part of this, but there, there's no there's no template. Mm. And so that's what they're that's all it. dealing with is, my God, how is this going to work? Mm. But there's nothing to say it mm. won't. Mm. Mm. Like, and, exactly. and this must happen in families too yeah. where somebody does has, something. Has others... to write the template. Yes. Rewrite the script. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping that Harry's doing that. He's got, um, you know, he's got years of having been in therapy. So yeah. hopefully he's got some... Some resources and, I mean, a good therapist will help people make sense of their emotions and give those emotions meaning or purpose. Mm. And I think strong emotions without being able to transform them into a sense of meaning or purpose will lead to drug addiction and yep. chronic depression and those sort of things. So I hope that he's making a new template. Me too. Mm. You know, I think they're all, they're in crisis mode and I'm not sure they need to be. Mm, yeah. But maybe they're not in crisis mode because I never know what is true. When I really read about the royals, yeah, yeah. Who or, knows? or and, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe they're all just saying, "How's the money going to work?" You know, that, that could be it. Good on you. Yeah. Have a nice life. Who knows what they're saying? Yeah. But um, I think for the rest of us, it's good to, you know, just reflect on our own family fallouts and and how we can maybe maybe how do we then I'll offer the olive branch when things have been difficult, when you've mm. had a fallout for a while and maybe you haven't spoken to someone for a few years. Mm. How does that go? When you try and reconnect. Yeah. yeah. When you think, oh, enough now. Life's too short. Yes, exactly. So one of the one of the I can't say this enough. I wish I could shout it from the rooftops. Humans get very defensive. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many human well, defences. I don't think that's true, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Oh, thank you. You should be a stand-up comic. <laughs> um, it, it's just the most difficult thing to overcome is our own defensiveness. And one of the mm. skills I teach is non-defensive listening and non-defensive communication. And, man, it's hard. Yeah. Um, but if we can minimise our defensiveness and stay open to hearing the other person's feelings and validate those, but also share our feelings and needs. Mm. So staying out of criticism and blame and finger pointing, so hard to do because that's defensiveness. Yep. Um, so that's why getting professional help can be really useful because you can learn some skills to stay mm. out of blame and judgment and criticism so that when you do approach that person or they approach you, you can actually open a dialogue and listen to each other's perspectives without having to agree yep. with each other. 